Good afternoon everybody, my name is Robert Hellqvist and I am a systems engineer and industrial PhD candidate at Sauber Aeronautics and Linköping University. The title of my presentation here today is Engineering Domain Interoperability, Connecting Modeling Domains Using the System Structure and Parameterization Standard. I would like to begin by mentioning the two research projects in which this work is conducted. First, the NFFP7 project, Digital Twin for Automated Model Validation and Flight Test Evaluation. Second, the ITA3 project, Environment for Model-Based Rigorous Adaptive Co-Design and Operation of Cyber-Physical System, or EMBRACE for short. Achieving increased interoperability between engineering disciplines is here motiva motivated by simplified configuration management, the ability to maximize reuse of models and simulation results, and in the end ensure that we are simulating the right thing, increasing the credibility in modeling and simulation, and taking better design decisions as early as possible. The disciplines considered within the frame of these two research projects are architecture modeling, geometry modeling, system simulation, requirements modeling, and conceptual development. The focus during this presentation, however, is placed on the disciplines of geometry modeling and system simulation. The information exchange methodology at Saab between the disciplines of geometry modeling and system simulation was assessed a few years ago in a previous research project. The conclusion then was that geometry modeling and system simulation often is conducted in separate organizations on separate computer networks using separate version control systems. The information exchange between models and modelers is typically done manually, engineer to engineer. This manual exchange is often a time-consuming and subjective task, subjective as there are humans aggregating and extracting the exchange information, meaning that it might not be done in the same way every time. Additionally, information concerning update is not necessarily propagated at the same rate that the models are being updated, possibly affecting the quality and credibility of the simulation results. Here, a method to exchange information that is based on the standards of MI and SSP is developed to address the presented challenges. The method is developed with tailoring functionality kept in close mind. The method needs to support tailoring to system-specific needs in a convenient manner. For example, customized aggregation of geometry parameters is essential to support lumped parameter system simulation models. Finally, the method needs to support legacy models such that it can be possible to export and incorporate information without or with minimal model modifications. Models to be used in simulator applications are at Saab developed according to the Saab Handbook for Development of Simulation Models. This handbook is available publicly at the reference at the bottom of this page. The handbook describes the steps that are needed in order to ready models for export to simulator applications. The main activities of the handbook are described in the dashed and red section of this figure. First, we have a specification activity including definitions of model intended use, requirement specification, etc. We then go into a development activity where component models are connected to form a subsystem model. The subsystem model can then be verified and validated. It is of course used and this use provides feedback to refining on the specification. Finally, once we feel that the model is mature enough, the model can be exported for use in a simulator application. This highlighted workflow is, at the presented level of detail, applicable not only to the development of subsystem models, but also simulator applications, as well as component models and component model libraries. Whereas the FMI standard focuses on the export of models for use in simulators, the activity marked as black here in the figure, the SSP standard focuses on the export of parameterized simulator architectures for integration in simulators at a higher level of abstraction, or for use in different frames of references. SSP is a portable zip file format containing everything that is needed to execute the simulator. 
except for the actual simulation engine. If looking into an SSP file, you will see a system structure description or SSD XML file along with the resources folder. The SSD file primarily describes the architecture of the simulators. In other words, how the different simulator constituent parts are connected to one another. The resources folder can contain other SSP files, FMUs. It can also contain so-called system structure values or SSV files. Simulator parameter values are specified in these SSV files. These parameter values can be mapped to the FMU parameters via name identification or via so-called system structure mapping files. So, as presented, the SSP contains multiple simulator configurations, just as many as there are SSV files in the SSP. Which of these SSV files that is active is specified in the SSD file? In this figure, you can see a proposed workflow of how the SSP and FMI standards can be used to achieve interoperability between geometry modeling and system simulation. This workflow is, ref is a refinement of the development activity of the previously mentioned handbook and therefore provides a connection to the existing processes at Saab and it's meant to be applicable to the development activity at all of the presented levels, presented levels of abstraction. First, geometry information is exported from CATIA via a set of developed Visual Basic for application macros. The geometry information is first exported to an intermediate XML format. An intermediate format is used in order to, for example, enable future bidirectional flow of information to simplify the conversion to other domain-specific XML formats and to allow for system-specific aggregation of information. This intermediate format is then converted to the SSV format. In parallel, a system simulation entity is packaged as an SSP file containing one or more FMUs, a template architecture definition in an SSD file, default parameter settings in one or more SSV files, and possibly a template SSM file providing the mapping between the parameter values and the parameters. In the next step, the geometry model SSV files are inserted into the SSP. Then the SSD and SSM templates are reviewed and updated with the accurate bindings. At this stage, we now have a simulator that is ready for use, verification and validation, and export. I will now present a use case in order to demonstrate that the developed methodology and functionality works. Here you can see a schematic description of a small simulator. This simulator consists of three connected FMUs, a modeled environmental control system, a coolant distribution system, a consumer of coolant power, in this case a radar, and a controlling software ensuring that the consumer can operate at desirable operating conditions. Two different configurations of the coolant distribution system are modeled in CATIA. Screenshots of the two model configurations can be seen in the top of the figure here. The parameters that are extracted from these geometry models are pipe hydraulic di diameters, lengths, and pressure drop coefficients. Additionally, even though not changed in the two configurations, the accumulator volume and the air to liquid heat exchange geometry is specified by the geometry models. The use case SSP file looks as follows. We can see three different FMUs in the resources folder, a radar FMU, a hardware FMU representing the environmental control system and the coolant distribution system, and a software FMU. There are two different SSV files representing the two different configurations. In configuration one, you can see the geometry model to the left here. Uh, the routing of the coolant distribution system is significantly longer compared to configuration two. In configuration one, three coolant the coolant power is generated in the aft of the aircraft, whereas it's generated directly behind the cockpit in configuration 2. These SSV files are directly exported from CATIA, and there is one SSM file providing the parameter mappings. Please note that there is only a need for a single SSM file in this case, as both the two configurations have the same parameter interface. 
In order to test this simulator, we formulated some simple scenario where the goal is to identify an unknown aircraft at some approximately known geographical location. The scenario starts with the climb and acceleration to some cruise conditions. The aircraft then operates at cruise conditions until it reaches the specified location. The radar is then shifted from standby to active. Once the sought aircraft is located, the operating conditions are matched to those of the foreign aircraft, and once contact has been established, the aircraft is returned to base. In this scenario, there is a subsystem requirement that needs to be fulfilled if the radar is to function. The radar will function provided that the difference between the inlet and outlet temperature of the coolant, uh, of the coolant it does not exceed 13 degrees Celsius. Here you can see some of the simulation results. The results of configuration 1, the longer routing, are shown as dashed, whereas configuration 2 are shown as solid. A longer routing with more bands results in a higher system pressure drop, which results in a, coolant, in a lower coolant mass flow. See the left-hand side uh, figure here. As a consequence, the difference between the consumer inlet and outlet temperature is significantly higher uh, in the configuration with the long routing. However, in this example, both of the configurations fulfill the expressed subsystem require requirement. In this work, we can draw the following main conclusions. System simulation and geometry modeling can be connected using the SSP standard. Such interoperability can be seen as an enabler for industry collaboration between partners using different tool suites. The use of open standards for achieving interoperability is also a very important enabler to avoid tool vendor lock-in effects. The developed CATIA toolbox aids in ensuring objective extraction of aggregated quantities needed for system simulation, thus increasing the credibility of the models and the corresponding simulation result. Additionally, the work has resulted in the specification of necessary functionality for manipulating SSPs. This manipulation functionality has been implemented in and tested using the OM simulator tool. Finally, the authors would like to express their gratitude to all the Embrace project partners, in particular, Leonard Ochel and Arun Kumar Palisiniami for their work implementing the necessary SSP manipulation functionality in the OM simulator tool. Thank you.